I used to be the kind of person that was constantly stuck on his phone, right? You can probably relate to this. I'd come home from school, I'd be on my phone, and until the moment that I slept, I'd be on my phone. Even beyond that, like I would stay up beyond the moment that I would like feel sleepy and groggy and tired. And I'd be wanting to sleep. My every signal in my body would be like, you need sleep right now. It'd be 2, 3 a.m. And I'd have, I'd have school the next day, right? And I would need to sleep, but I would keep scrolling right scrolling and scrolling through facebook right at the time like that's what was popular these days and <laughs> it wasn't tiktok that wasn't that didn't exist yet instagram not yet but that was what it was, it was right it was just complete bullshit as well like just memes and just like you know just random stuff that didn't really you know have any relevance to me at all no kind of usefulness no kind of like anything at all right and everywhere I'd go, I'd go to the toilet, I'd be on my phone, I'd eat my meal, I'd be on my phone, right? Just, I'd keep scrolling all day. And it didn't feel great for me, right? Especially as a kid, like I didn't really have much else in my life, right? I didn't have any social interaction, I didn't really have anything wholesome going on in my life, right? I didn't ever like seek to go to any school clubs. My life was quite boring, right? And so for a decent chunk of my childhood, right? If you can imagine this, I have no memories of anything happening because all I did was just, you know, stay on my phone, scrolling, 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 right? And looking back at that time, it's such a heartbreaking feeling for me. I was like, I wasted chunks of my childhood to these addictive apps on my phone, right? And just to throw that away, just to know that I threw that away, like brings a tear to my eye. Like I was like, the things I could have done with that time, right? Now fast forward to today, right? Right now, I am the happiest I've ever held, felt in my life, right? I have no addiction to anything on my phone, nothing, right? Instagram, TikTok, whatever is on my phone these days that people are addicted to, I don't have that problem anymore, right? Nothing in that zone ever gets to me, right? I read books, I go for long walks, and, and nothing in my life is something that I am struggling to kind of get away from. So today I wanna to tell you how I got to that stage and how I've gotten to the level at which I am completely fine with these things, right? I'm completely fine just doing nothing, right? Like even waiting in a line, I can just be fine with myself, with my own thoughts, right? I don't feel the need to bring out my phone or anything like that. I feel completely fine, right? How did I get to that point? So we'll start with the phone, right? Apps on the phone. And I'll tell you using a story that I have myself of being addicted to Instagram, right? Because that was the app that I was addicted to and that's the story that I have to tell about that, right? I don't necessarily have a story about Snapchat or TikTok, but you can draw the lessons and apply it the, the same, right? So on Instagram, I had Instagram on my phone and here's the exact steps I took to get off of it, right? As, as with Facebook, when I was in high school, I was kind, kind of addicted to this app, right? And so I had to kind of get rid of it off of my phone. And that to me was like such a shock and such a, a big thing, a big deal, that I couldn't do it all straight away, right? Like you can imagine, like imagine this, right? You're, you can probably relate to this. Your Instagram is like your, your social CV. You care about it so much. Everything that's on there is like stuff that you've curated to be, oh, people are gonna see this account and so I have to make it look as good as possible and I've curated it for years. Like I look good in this pose and I have this story and this highlight and this kind of thing. All these things that make me look amazing. And so deleting that, it's just such a huge hurdle that I couldn't do it myself. And so I can't recommend that for you guys. What I did was regress it over time, re reduce the amount that I cared about it over time, right? First of all, I had to ban myself from the explore page because that's the explore page is an infinite scroll of stuff to do and that leads to nowhere, leads to very unproductive hours and wasted days and weeks and months of your life, right? So ban yourself from that first of all, that's what I did first of all. Then what I did was I started to reduce the amount of people I was following, right? I was following, you know, hundreds of people and I couldn't, there's no way I can keep up with that. And if I wanted to keep up with that, I just spend hours and hours of my time dedicated to, you know, the sake of looking at other people's lives. And that wasn't something that was invested into my own success, my own productivity and my own kind of prerogative in life, right? So I had to reduce that. So get down to single digits. Single digits is pretty impressive. 
I liked to look at the ideal of like zero, but there was definitely points in my life where I had just my my girlfriend at the time and my two brothers, right? So three people I was following. And so that meant the Instagram feed for me was very short, right? No one posted anything. Like these like people in my life weren't like aggressive posters on Instagram anyway. So going on Instagram was pretty much a, you know, I could check it once a month and be up to date, right? It has to be that level. It has to be so, you have to reduce the level of stimulation. It has to be become more boring. You, have, you need to give yourself less reasons to go onto the app. And so you can reduce your addiction in that way, right? The second thing I did, it was reduce my profile over time, right? So you might start with things like your highlights. I don't know if Instagram works the same way right now, but at the time it, there was like highlights on your profile, which where you can put your stories on there and things like that. Stories as well. Stories I wouldn't post at all because stories, when you post stories, you want to keep coming back to see who's liked it, to see who's like viewed it or whatever, how many views it's got and all that kind of stuff. You just keep wanting to come back. And so story, I wouldn't post stories anymore if you're trying to slowly reduce this over time because it's one of those things that just takes time away from you and just doesn't really give you anything in return. It's bad for your mental health and it doesn't do anything good, right? Then I would get rid of your photos, your like profile posts and things like that over time, slowly over time, just try to reduce the kind of, the need for you to have that profile in general, right? So you might delete your worst photos and then you might delete some better ones and over time you'll delete that and then it becomes your bio and then it becomes your profile picture and finally you'll be left with a blank social media page, right? And so now there's not much tying you to that page anymore, right? There's not much left there. You're not following anyone really and you have a blank profile and you're like, you could at this point delete your profile and just be at peace with that, right? And so that's the next natural step, right? To delete your profile in, in, entirely, right? And that would mean that you have no attachment to this app altogether and that's, that's that, right? So maybe a less extreme version of that if you're not ready to delete your profile entirely altogether is to delete the app off of your phone and start using the app on your browser, on your computer or on your phone. It becomes a lot harder to access your profile and your like your feed and all that because you have to log in every time. And on the computer, it's a lot less addictive to use. It's, there's like less functionality, there's less kind of a, you know, a tactile feel for it and there's less, you know, doom scroll ability on a laptop than you have on your phone, right? So that's what I would recommend for most apps that are addictive on your phone, such as Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. TikTok, I think is very dangerous because it's all it is is an infinite scroll, right? Like there are parts of other apps that are infinite scrolls, like Instagram, like Reels and things like that. But TikTok is that and that alone, right? So it's quite dangerous. And so I can't honestly recommend that for people to watch, to be honest with you. So I know it's a polarizing opinion, but I think TikTok is just pure, like it's not a great app to use. It's, it's designed to addict you in, the, in the, the worst possible way and show you the worst kinds of content as well, right? I know there's like a the section of it that can, only shows you what you're following, but I think, I'm pretty sure it adds in stuff as well, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the case, right? Once that finishes, it, it just goes on scrolling, like recommended stuff as well, right? So yeah, honestly, I can't recommend TikTok. I know a lot of you might hate me for that, but just stay off of it, to be honest with you. Like I even post stuff on TikTok and I don't recommend it, right? But if people happen to be on there, they can find my stuff. That's why I post on there to just actually genuinely help people. If I can put something helpful in a bad app, then why not, right? That's my excuse. I, I might seem like a hypocrite for that. I do have an Instagram account, by the way, right? Dylan, you hypocrite. Oh my goodness, you hypocrite. It's because I am a social media, I'm pursuing a social media career, right? I think that justifies my use of the app for myself, right? And to be honest with you, the time I spend on it, right? Because right now I've come back to it and created one for this career. And the time I spend on it is about 20 minutes per month, if that. Right, so I'm definitely not addicted to it and it's something that I, I, I don't see myself ever going on impulsively to scroll on it like that, right? It's, it never ever happens like that. So that's the phone. Let me tell you a story about how I go about my day. Let me tell you my daily routine. And in that is a story of how I go about my day without exposing myself to like very stimulating contact and basically having a dopamine detox every single day. Because here's the thing, right? 
the thing with a dopamine detox or whatever phrase you want to use for it, a dopamine fast or anything like that, is that a lot of people have the mentality of like doing it for a challenge, right? Like a one week challenge, a one month challenge, right? Where I do this and do that. The thing is, you've got to have some element of permanence to that thing, right? A challenge isn't bad in itself, I'm not saying that. It's the fact that people make it so difficult for themselves and so short term mentality that it doesn't last. And when they, they're just itching to go back to that thing that they were addicted to in the first place and it, you come crashing back and it's not the best thing to do for yourself. It's, it's awful to actually intentionally try to quit this thing for good, right? So when you go into a challenge like that, try to think about, okay, could I do this long term? Like, might this make me reconsider and change my life actually? And is it actually doable? Then I might do that thing, right? So I like to, in my life, think about the long term changes and actually benefit my life and actually think about like, okay, could I do this for life, right? Is this something that's sustainable that I can continue doing and like something I can give up for good and I'll be fine with it? If it's that, then I'm like, okay, let's do it. Let's start doing that thing, right? That's the thing first of all, right? And so with that said, here is my daily routine and here's how I go about my day on an average day. And I'll tell you the reasoning behind each little thing that I do. So without further ado, the first thing, I wake up and I, I start writing, right? Why? Because it's just part of my schedule, right? And that's number one, right? You have to have a military routine that you follow no matter what, right? Like every little part of your day is scheduled out and you know exactly what you're doing because I feel like the number one reason why I scroll through my phone, right? And you, probably you too as well, is because you don't have anything to do in your day, right? And I'll be honest, I do catch myself sometimes in on bad days, I scroll through like YouTube shorts because you can't really delete YouTube off your phone. It's, it's useful in other ways, but the shorts feed is almost like a mini TikTok within YouTube, right? So sometimes I catch myself on that. And the reason I do that is because I haven't planned out that part of the day. I'm like, oh, I, I don't know what I'm doing right now. And you know what? I'll just open up YouTube and start scrolling. And it ends up like that. You end up wasting hours on the toilet, like between work sessions or whatever it is, because you haven't intentionally planned your day. So have some kind of military routine where you know exactly what you are doing so that you don't end up wasting time just you know, filling the, filling bits in, right? Because filling bits in, that stuff adds up and it counts to hours of screen time in your day, right? And it, that is not good, right? So that's tip number one. Tip number two is the fact that my phone by default is on airplane mode, right? When I wake up, my alarm goes off, I have nothing on my phone, nothing trying to vie for my attention, nothing kind of pinging in my face. And even if my phone wasn't on airplane mode, every notification i've talked about this before in videos every notification on my phone is turned off so nothing whatsapp messages phone calls nothing ever gets through my phone doesn't make any noise it's always on silent right i believe i have a phone like i don't think you can turn off phone calls as like a noise i think that always goes through and so i get phone calls if i if i need to get them but if it's airplane mode i won't even get those right nothing signal coming into my phone i don't just get distracted by anything right because when you allow yourself to get distracted like that, you're giving your phone permission to drag the attention away from the stuff you care about, the stuff that's more productive, the stuff that's something that you want to put time towards, your phone drags you away from that, right? So that's that's an element there, airplane mode as well. Once I get a little bit of work done, I go outside to walk my dog and take a walk in nature, okay? This is like the primary example of something that is you know, the classic dopamine detox thing to do, the thing that is, you know, enjoy nature and like be away from screens, be away from technology and just have some time to enjoy the sights and the sounds of nature. And to be honest with you, this is a bit of a polarizing opinion, but I don't respect people who like put earphones in and listen to music and podcasts and things like that while they're out on the walk, right? You're out in nature. The whole purpose of this is to enjoy the sights that you can see and the sounds you can hear in your ears, the trees rustling in the wind. That's the whole point, right? Don't try and multitask by like saying, oh yeah, music makes me happy or I can I can get more productive by listening to a podcast at the same time. Don't kid yourself. Come on, like this is the purpose of being outside. Enjoy that part. Enjoy nature, right? 
and it's it's antisocial as well. You come across people, you might walk your dog in certain parts and you say, even if it's hi or just good morning, right? If it's just that, that social benefit is something that you don't want to just like shut yourself off from in life, right? A lot of people who do dopamine detoxes just treat it like this kind of like imprisonment zone, right? Like solitary confinement or something like that. They like treat it like it's it's some incredibly like arduous process to get through, right? It doesn't have to be like that. Dopamine detox isn't about like like having no fun. That's not what it's about, right? So when you go for your morning walks or your nature walks in general, just be there and be in the moment. Don't use earphones because that just defeats the point, right? So when I come back from that, I typically do a bit more work, maybe eat some lunch as well at the same time. And, and at that point in the day, I'll typically do something like read a book. Like, so while I'm eating my meal, I will read an audio book or something like that, or watch some long form kind of YouTube video. And for that, that I have something to say about that as well. I like to, when I'm browsing for YouTube videos, I don't actually watch the video in the moment, right? I click the video, I click like, and I, I close the tab, right? So that YouTube like compiles all the videos that I've liked in the past, and that's how I look at it. So when I come back in the morning, when I'm eating my food, I can be like, okay, let's look at the videos that I've liked, and I'll watch one of those. So I've kind of pre-selected all the videos that I want to watch, and I can just select one of those. Typically a long form piece of content, like a podcast or something like that, something that I would actually gain some wisdom from, something I would actually gain something useful out of, right? And I pre-select that, right? So an audio book, a YouTube video, a third thing might be a like a movie, right? Something that I believe is like artistic and creative and tells a good story. Typically I've been obsessed with Studio Ghibli movies, right? Very, very well created, very well done, artistic stories that tell the story in such an amazing way. Art is something that I really care about and stories especially are something I care about. So that especially, watching a high quality, good quality movie is something that brings me joy and brings me meaning in my life. And that is something that I really put time towards as something that I think is useful and well, time well spent for me, right? And again, to come back to that point of like, oh, I thought dopamine detox means you have no fun in life. Yes, look, you can have fun, you can watch movies. And like, even me at some point in my life, when I went into kind of like a, a monk mode zone, I used to be up like, you know, I'd never watch any movies, I never watch any TV, and I would like reject the concept of having any kind of fun like that, right? And maybe for some period of your life that might be applicable, but for the long term, you're just not gonna have fun at all ever in life? No, right? There, there's a difference when there's like, you know, a hustle mindset, a grind mindset for like a, you know, half a year or a year of your life where you're just like really concentrating and really trying to focus, but for all of your life, that's not a fun thing to have, right? That's not, your life isn't gonna be enjoyable, right? The whole point of life is to enjoy it, right? So yes, those three things, right? I read a book, I watch YouTube videos, and I will watch a Studio Ghibli movie or something of that kind of sort that I enjoy a lot, right? After that, I'll do a bit more work, and then at that point, I will probably head to the gym and the sauna, right? So I go to the sauna, and typically in there, I like to talk to people and see my friends and talk to strangers as well, right? To to have that kind of social interaction is a very important part of the day for me. It's very important for us to connect with individuals in life, right? Like I said before, it's not about solitary confinement. You do indeed need to talk to people. It's one of those essential things that humans need in life to be happy, to like maintain a, a healthy level of mental health, right? To have that social interaction is a very important part of the day. So don't skip out on that, especially. So typically I'll come home from that and I won't have much time left in the day. I'll typically just, you know, I might finish that movie that I started earlier in the day. I might read a bit of a book and then I'll probably just go to sleep, right? And so the common theme you keep coming back to, you might hear in this day that I've described of my own, is that the activities that I choose to do are very wholesome activities. They're very kind of like, Oh, that's that's kind of that's kind of nice to do that right and generally you feel like imagine yourself doing these activities right do you ever feel like you would be disappointed or like ashamed in yourself by doing those, these activities are you ever ashamed of going to the gym right? how do you feel about yourself when you go to the gym how do you feel about yourself when you take an, a walk in nature how do you feel about yourself when you read a book right and contrast that with the other side with what you might be doing right now. How do you feel when you scroll through TikTok for three hours? How do you feel when you 
you know, waste time sitting on the toilet for three hours going through like Instagram or something like that, right? These things generally don't make you feel good, right? And that's a good signal. Like try to make things or plan your day out. Like I said, at the start of this with the military routine, try to plan your day out so that you have things in the day that make you feel proud of doing them. Let that pride kind of guide you in what you feel is important for you to do, right? And so if there's something that I've described that doesn't make you feel good, then don't do that. If there's something that I haven't described that makes you feel good, then do that. If you're proud of that fact that you do that, then do that in the day, right? It can be individual to you. So at the end of this video, just think about the person you want to be, right? Do you want to live your whole life in regret, thinking that, okay, I could have spent some time doing something productive in my life. Like I wasted that part of my childhood just scrolling through TikTok, right? Do you want to feel that shame, that guilt? Or do you want to feel at the end of every single day, you know what? I did some good work today. I did something productive. I talked to people. I made people's put a smile on people's faces. I'm really proud of what I did today. I feel good about myself because of what I did today. Do you want to feel like that? Ask yourself that question. And so with that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a like. It really helps out the channel. And subscribe if you really loved it and you want to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Knowledge is power and the power is yours. I'll see you tomorrow.